Awesome. All right. Thank you, Simon. All right, folks. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's learn more about the uh, the incident response with Jupyter Notebooks. So, some of you probably have heard me um, and others talk about Jupyter Notebooks quite a bit. But today, we're going to show you how to apply some of the basic things that you have done in Jupyter Notebooks, as well as some of the software engineering practices to be able to apply it in the incident response sort of world. So, as you may already know, uh, data estates getting more complex and since systems are getting more complex as well. How do we, you know, think about using troubleshooting guides in a different way because it might be the weakest link for your or toward your happy customers. All right, so here we go. So uh, joining me today is Shafiq, who is my partner in home, uh, who is the software engineering manager uh, at work at, at Microsoft. So uh, he and I work together um, in, the, in this world of TSG Ops. So, and, uh, and I am uh, Julie Cosmano, I'm a program manager uh, at Microsoft as well. All right, so these are some of the learning journey today. So first of all, I wanted to highlight if you actually uh, go to that link of the bit.ly link, uh, you will be able to take a look at the, uh, the, the slides today. So you can just follow through um, as I'm going through this with you if, if you'd like. And I'll be updating the, the session notes as well on, on that link. All right, so our four learning uh, items today are, the first one is why incident respond? Why is it so hard? So let's talk about the problem statement. And then we'll talk about how do we rethink about troubleshooting guides uh, in a different light? And how do we think about using executable, reusable, automatable troubleshooting guides with Jupyter Notebooks and tying it all together? So that's our last bit, which is a demo. And then we'll share with you the, uh, the resources where you can get started as well. Now, first of all, uh, we wanted to set a kind of baseline here. So when we, so Shafiq and I talk about troubleshooting guides or TSG, it really does mean uh, similar to like playbook and runbook or knowledge base. So we don't distinguish it just for the simplicity purposes, but at times you would have to kind of think about it in a two different lights, which is, you know, steps to identify issues or procedures to achieve specific outcome or essentially maybe how to mitigate as an example. But in this context, let's just refer to them as just TSG, just to make it simple. And if you are new to notebooks, uh, check out other uh, other videos that I have created before for other uh, for other conferences. Also, if you're new to parameterization in notebooks, I do also highly recommend checking out Aaron Nelson's parameterization in Azure Data Studio. Um, he presented it at, at Data Expo, a really good coverage on uh, on how to do parameterization in Azure Data Studio uh, for notebooks. So if you're pretty new to notebooks, so this is the screen just showing like a quick kind of overview of what you can do with uh, with notebooks, essentially, you know, code and then the results and then documentation as well in one place. So let's step back a little bit here. So what is the problem that we're trying to solve in the incident response sort of world? Now, firstly, I'd like to begin with a question. Where do you store your troubleshooting guides or your knowledge base today whenever you have you know, this instant response? How do, you, how do you go back to that documentation that uh, helps you to troubleshoot issues? So how do you store it? Do you store it in OneNote? Do you store it in PDFs? Do you store it in Wiki? Do you store them as scripts? And where do you, uh, where do you store them? Is it in SharePoint? Is it actually version controlled? Is it on the network drive? And then have you thought about the permission aspect of it, confidential sort of, you know, uh, policy around it? How about securing it? And lastly, how do you think about making it recoverable? Like what if the, uh, the troubleshooting guides are gone? Like how do you recover from it? So these are some of the big questions that sometimes quite forgotten, but you should really look into it again, especially in the, you know, this 24 seven sort of world, it's definitely worth uh, revisiting that. And there are two sets of keystrokes that are very, very often used, and it actually can be quite dangerous, which is control C, control V. So you do a lot of copying from code from one place, your perhaps your OneNote or other places, and then paste it to say, for example, SQL Server Management Studio or Azure Data Studio, etc. So a lot of copying this code and then modifying. So essentially in the SRE or Site Reliability Engineering world or DevOps world, this is considered as toil. 
So it sounds subtle, but it is actually very erroneous. <laughs> so, um, so something to consider there. So if I were to summarize the troubleshooting guides challenges today, is the fact that you do a lot of copying and pasting with the static troubleshooting guides. It's hard to discover. It's hard to keep track of changes and think about the quality as well. Is it testable? What if you actually ship a new system? Is your troubleshooting guide actually testable or have uh, or match or in parity with that new version? And what if you want to crowdsource troubleshooting guides? And is it easy to search? And it's actually also not reusable and also not automatable. If we were looking at the uh, state of DevOps research uh, from 2019, there was a section that was called productivity burnout and juggling work. I thought this was, this was absolutely uh, relevant to where we are today as well in 2021. So essentially what they're saying is in that research is saying that reducing toil is actually quite important. And we wanna make the work this, you know, um, ops world to be more repeatable, to be more consistent, fast, scalable, and auditable. And that resonates with what we do here today in the TSG ops uh, methodology. I um, highly recommend to check that uh, study, by the way. It's, it's a really good reading. <laughs> All right, so what if we take a step forward a little bit here and look at troubleshooting guides in a different light, which is essentially looking at it from software artifacts point of view or software engineering point of view. So if we can make TSGs, your troubleshooting guides content as software artifacts, so what that really means is you can uh, make them executable, you can make them reusable, and you can make them automatable as well. So if they are software artifacts, then that means you can also potentially do this auto, like the goodness of auto build, auto uh, testing as well, right? So, um, and actually that's the world where Shafiq is in today. So that's why I'm so excited to have him talk more about how um, TSG engineering uh, loop works uh, in, the, in, in, in a moment. Before we get there, Let's pause a little bit on the TSG's sort of characteristics that we ideally think would work well. So we like the aspect that, you know, the troubleshooting guides usually have documentation and the fact that it has code, but we want it to be executable. We want it to be auditable. So that means you want to be able to include results, uh, perhaps visualization, perhaps some analysis and interpretation. And this is where notebooks really shine. So imagine, putting troubleshooting guides as software artifacts with notebooks. And this is a, a, a short plug-in to Azure Data Studio, by the way. Uh, as you may already know, Azure Data Studio actually supports distributed notebooks. So if you want to try that, just go to ak.ms, get Azure Data Studio. But feel free to use other Jupyter Notebook, um, I suppose, IDE that works for you. Uh, for us, um, Azure Data Studio works really, really well because it allows us to connect to other data sources like SQL Server, Azure SQL, uh, Postgres, Azure Data Explorer, actually Azure Monitor Log soon as well. So um, for, for troubleshooting, especially data in the data world, it's it's really ideal uh, uh, for, for a lot of users today. All right, with that, I'm going to hand it to Shafiq. Thank you, Julie. So as, as Julie pointed out, troubleshooting guides are very important artifacts um, to be able to deliver on the promises of reliability, supportability, and all the service level agreements you have um, so we believe that we should have an engineering discipline behind it. Uh, like if you think of OneNote, Word documents, there's, they're just stored there. There's, there's not much engineering discipline. Like there's no testing behind it. There's no, not much review behind it. Um, so, so if you look at the diagram on the right, uh, those are a couple of loops we've identified where uh, we think this is how troubleshooting guides are used and that's what we've seen on our teams so you add an update a troubleshooting guide now if you do think about notebooks uh, you would add change the notebook now you can check it in and we are checking it into a github uh, repo or a, a git repository uh, so that allows people to review the changes and approve them and then we also believe in uh, testing the troubleshooting guides. And once uh, it's all checked in and ready and tested, 
uh, you can manually ex execute it. That's the inner loop you're seeing there. So, so the developer, when they're handling an incident, would go and manually execute it. And then as you do with the incidents and tickets, uh, if, you, if you have post-mortem meetings, that's where you would also identify improvements you need to do to your TSGs uh, or new TSGs which needs to be added. And you can create tasks for that and, and keep doing this loop and improving your process over time. Now, the outer loop you're seeing there is about automation. So once you've tested, you could also automate things like uh, deploy it to an execution framework and then uh, use those same notebooks you're using manually to, to do like uh, auto detect incidents or do auto root cause analysis and, and things like that. Right. And uh, so notebooks are simple format. It's a JSON document uh, and uh, you're using Git for version control. So it's a very simple system, very flexible. You can take it to any environment you have. If you have some secure environments or if you have environments which are only uh, on-prem without online access, this can be um, modified to suit your needs. Right? And notebooks are easily shareable. And uh, the beauty of notebooks is um, uh, they also store the results in them. So, so once you execute something, let's say there's been failures or successes, those because those items or or those executions become inherent part of the notebook when you save it and and share it with people. So that allows you for to do debugging or forensic analysis of uh, what happened uh, while the incident was being mitigated. Um, so I'll give it back to you, Julie. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Shafiq. Okay, let's go to the next slides. All right. So how do we think about executable, reusable, automatable TSUs with Jupyter Notebooks here? So essentially, like we've, we've talked about before, if we can build from the executable, we can achieve that reusable and we can achieve that automatable. And therefore, it's going to be less toil. So reduced um, manual execution, right? So when we think about executable, you can think of it as simply like it has to be able to be run on a user interface. So that way you can develop your content, your troubleshooting guides, and you can also test it manually. You can you know run it and it, and it actually works. And this is why where you know Jupyter Notebooks in Azure Data Studio works really well because you can do that. Um, and then the second one is being able to parameterize it. So if you want to be able to make it a little bit more scalable, it has to be parameterizable. What that really means is, a, say, if you have a, a troubleshooting guide for a specific SQL uh, data source, as an example, it should also be able to be run against other data sources. So you should be able to parameterize that. And Jupyter Notebook supports that. And Azure Data Studio supports you to be able to parameterize your, um, your notebooks as well if you're running PowerShell or Python. And then uh, automation as the automation aspect of it is actually fairly simple today, and it's going to be a lot better, hopefully, uh, in, in, the, in the coming uh, months. So the first one is, if you are using SQL Notebook today and you want to run it against multiple servers or databases, I would highly recommend checking out this info SQL Notebook commandlet, um, which means you can run it in PowerShell. Um, and then if you are using PowerShell notebooks, then I would highly recommend using info execute notebook. And that allows you to run uh, PowerShell notebooks. Uh, and then lastly, if you're using Python, then Papermill is the sort of go-to standard. So essentially, if you're if you are using PowerShell or Python today, you're actually quite a way away there, as in like you're 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 uh, you're almost set. So essentially now when we think about automatable, now the question is what systems or automation solutions, I suppose, that support either PowerShell or Python. These are pretty popular languages, right? So you'll be able to kind of invoke these commandlets or use PeopleMill as an example, PeopleMill package. So I would highly recommend uh, uh, trying this out as well if you're, if you're new to, uh, to automation or new to trying to automate notebooks. All right, so what, what have we covered today? So troubleshooting guides could be a way for you to kind of improve your incident response today, like 
thinking, rethinking about how you approach troubleshooting guides using software uh, engineering practices, like uh, Shafiq has mentioned before, thinking about troubleshooting guides as software artifacts using Jupyter notebooks and building up that executable to reusable to automatable uh, troubleshooting guides. So next then, let's wrap it up with what can we automate and then uh, some demo. All right, so there are two types of automations that you can do. So in the incident response world, you have the diagnosis aspect, and then you also, the, also have the detection and mitigation. So with that, I'll, I'll let Shafiq to chime in some more on the automation aspects that we've, uh, uh, we've thought about in TSE Ops and we've also implemented too. <laughs> So, um, so on the next slide, you'll see uh, the workflow. Oh, just, well, in this diagram, you'll see what auto diagnose and RCA means. So, so when a ticket is filed, uh, this is all automation without any human intervention. So, when we, we can run some queries, uh, this could be part of the notebook. So, so the no notebook is executed. Uh, you can run queries on your telemetry or even make some REST API calls to your service. Uh, to get some information and enhance the ticket. So you're getting information and adding back to the ticket. So what happens is when the developer or DRI opens the ticket, the information is ready for, for them. So Julie was mentioning a bunch of toil in the past. Uh, so what this does is removes a bunch of uh, the time you spend or minutes you spend in the beginning of your investigation uh, uh, going to a bunch of systems, uh, running queries, is all automatically handled for you. And this makes a huge difference uh, in your uh, time to mitigate and uh, time to detect and investigate. So for this kind of workflow, it's very simple. You need only read-only access. So the environment executing the notebook uh, just needs read-only access to logs and read-only access to service endpoints and maybe write-only access to the ticketing system so that it can write back. Uh, then the other thing Julie mentioned was auto detection and auto mitigation. So over here, this is more a, um, a, a flow which is working on a timer. So from time to time, the system kicks off a notebook uh, which can detect a problem, like it could run a query. And if it detects a problem, it can go and log a failure. And uh, in addition to that, the next step it could check is, is there a safe mitigation? And if it knows that, uh, then it could perform the action to take care of the incident. So this is the happy path where everything's handled, no human is involved, and your system is uh, back up and running. Now, if you do not detect a safe mitigation, you can file a ticket that becomes the auto detect scenario. And uh, if you don't find a problem, you're also logging a success and, and you're getting uh, some telemetry saying, hey, the system is looking good. Uh, so, so in this scenario, you do need a little more permissions, like uh, you need read write permissions to logs because you're writing back. Even on the service endpoint, you need some write permissions so that you can take some actions to fix the service. So over here, you have to be a little careful where you have to identify actions which are safe and only do those uh, because you don't want to open your system up um, because if you have issues or uh, bugs in your TSGs, you don't want them bringing down your system. So, uh, so a little more care needs to be taken for uh, auto mitigation, but it is possible to identify some uh, high impact incidents and auto mitigate them. So back to you, Julie. All right, yes. thanks. Uh, thanks, Shafiq. Okay, let's uh, go through a simple demo how we can illustrate how it actually can work from the from the uh, incident response sort of ticketing system or support case system all the way to an execution of uh, notebooks. So let me before I start with this, um, let me show you one thing here. So assume that, so let me just double check. Yeah, this is the one. So assume I have this DB Diagnostics notebook, which I actually uh, borrowed from uh, Glenn Berry's Azure SQL Database Diagnostic Information Queries. So I've, I've taken some ex excerpts of, of this notebook and essentially um, think that, hey, if there is a an incident assigned to me, I want this diagnostics uh, notebook to be run 
before before I read it. So essentially pre-execute this so that I don't have to execute it manually. I don't have to do that copying, pasting code, right? So that's that's what I, I, I aim to do. And in fact, uh, let me just switch over to here. So in fact, I actually have published that db.diagnostics.ipynp file uh, to my uh, GitHub. So, um, so I'm hoping that the uh, system, the incident ticketing system can actually pick it up, pick up this notebook from GitHub and then just run it. And then when it's assigned to me, yeah, I can just read it. Right? I can read the outcome. So as you can see here, just kind of showing you, there is no result sets. The, the notebook is just kind of clean. So there's no results. It's just a bunch of code like, uh, like such. All right, so what I wanted to do is, let me just go back to PowerPoint here. When there is a um, incident or a support case that's assigned to me, um, it will automatically execute the notebook and then it will also post the, the link of the notebook outcome. So this is the pre-executed notebooks with the results uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the ticket. And then hopefully it also gets emailed to me. How wonderful is that? <laughs> or maybe not so much because you know your inbox might be pretty full, but <laughs> at least the notebooks part is being pre-executed, right? So let's go here a little bit just to kind of make it real, um, as real as we can. So let me just do, uh, do, do, do um, F11 here. Oh, doesn't kind of make me, never mind. I was gonna uh, make it a little bit uh, bigger, <laughs> the, the browser, but didn't let me. Uh, anyhow, uh, anyhow, so I do have a ticket here, uh, which is called slow query. It hasn't been assigned to anybody. So I'm just opening it. Um, it looks like it hasn't been assigned to anybody. The notes here just says Cloud Summit test, and then that's pretty much it. So now I'm going to assign it to me. And then I'm just going to close this for a moment, and then we'll get back to it because the execution should take a couple of minutes. So what happens in the back end is essentially when that ticket that I just showed you, so this I'm using planners kind of to illustrate an incident response system or support case system, right? So in the back end, when I assign that, when that ticket is assigned to me, it's going to trigger this Azure Logic Apps uh, workflow, which will run Azure Automation, which will run this TSG notebook from GitHub, will fetch it from there and then run it and then store it into a, an Azure storage, Azure Blob storage so that I can view it later. So with that, let's take a look inside the, uh, in the, inside the Azure Logic Apps workflow itself. So this is what we have today. So I have a demo TSU workflow, a logic app, and if I click on edit, it will show me the flow. So it will uh, say that when a task is assigned to me on planner, then I'm going to create a new instance of a, essentially of a, a job of the Azure automation job. So I have my automation account execute notebook here, and I have the uh, run book name info SQL notebook. The magic actually happens in this info SQL notebook, which I will show you momentarily. And what it's going to do is it's going to pass the parameter, um, the title of that uh, of that uh, ticket, into the info SQL notebook. Um, if you recalled earlier, the title of my um, ticket actually has a server name and database name, right? So it's going to uh, it, it's going to parse that. And then after that, it's just going to update the uh, planner task and then, um, you know, with some content here. And then lastly, it is going to send me an email. So it's going to send me an email with the link to the planner It will the link to the uh, notebook itself. So now let's dig into the Info SQL notebook run book, which is part of the Azure automation. It's essentially just a PowerShell. So if you click on edit here and it's just, PowerShell. So it uh, takes the title parameter. It's just doing some kind of fancy uh, extraction of server name and database name. And then after that, it's going to uh, go to my GitHub account uh, in a moment. There it is. I'm <laughs> going to my GitHub account here. And yeah, just fetching it so that I can execute it against info SQL notebook commandlet. All right. So. Yep, so that's going to run the server name and database name. 
and then afterwards it's going to post it to the Azure storage uh, account. So the, the rest of the um, uh, code is essentially to post it to Azure storage account. All right, so what you've seen today is essentially someone, uh, it just happened to be me at the time, but someone else could write a TSG notebook and publish it on GitHub. And then so that if, say for example, a support person, say for example, Tim, create a task and assign it to a DBA, it will invoke all this beautiful workflow and run the appropriate notebooks, obviously. And then so that when it gets assigned to somebody, say for example, Gloria or myself, it's going to have all the details that is needed. So with that, I'm just going to show you uh, quickly, looks like it's done. So take a look here, um, a new uh, notebook has just been created. And then last but not least, because this is probably the key thing that we wanted to show you. Essentially, hey, I've got an email and it just got sent to me, uh, local time is 9.43. So if I click on that, it will say, do you want to open it in Azure Data Studio? And I say, yes. So, and then click open. Yeah, download it. So it just, um, it's just opening the, uh, the notebook execution, the, the pre-executed notebook. So if I scroll down, then I can see that, you know, certain cells have been, actually all the cells have been run, so I can start doing the diagnosis. So less, essentially less, um, less copying and pasting, everything is pre-run for me. Um, so we covered this a little bit before, so I'm just gonna speed it up since we're actually running out of time. And uh, no, I wanna be respectful of the next speaker as well. Um, so essentially you can have author and you can have consumer, and there is the pipeline of the TSU repo and validation. Um, that you can use, um, and this is super important, especially if you um, if you have a pipeline that can check your kind of cred scan or passwords, etc. That might be actually accidentally included in your troubleshooting guides. That would be uh, that that should be something that you want to kind of consider. Um, so yeah, today I showed you GitHub repo, and then the task workflow is just using Planner and Azure Logic apps. All right, so uh, just wanted to wrap up the. Uh, the useful resources or some of the things that you can do today. So first is learn Jupyter Notebooks. And if you're really, really new with Jupyter Notebooks and really new with Python, I would highly recommend um, using Azure Data Studio. That's how I, I also got uh, started um, as well. Like got started like, you know, really diving into notebooks more. And then think about how you can format your TSCs to be more execu uh, executable and reusable. And then think about automation as well, because this is the part where it will save you time and hopefully um, give you that, you know, uh, advantage, um, winning advantage over uh, other uh, other companies or competitors, as an example. So um, just to wrap up, I've got a bunch of um, references that I have shared here on the slides that you can take a look um, at your, you know, free time. Um, I would like to especially thank the community because without them, uh, this uh, this wouldn't happen as well because, uh, for example, Glenn Berry's diagnostic notebooks have been super helpful for a lot of people. Uh, Rob Sewells has talked about Jupyter Notebooks as well. Doug Fink talked about um, how to use PowerShell, notebooks in PowerShell. In fact, he, he is the, uh, uh, the creator of the PowerShell notebook module for Info Execute um, Notebook. And lastly, Emmanuel also has created this SQL diagnostic Jupyter book. So with that, I think I'm going to end. Um, I might actually, if I can, go to, uh, let's see. I wanted to show you this because in case you miss the slides, um, go to this bit.ly uh, link because it will contain the updated slide deck in you know, five minutes, hopefully, <laughs> as well as all the session I'll, notes. I'll, 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 and follow me on Twitter for any additional updates as well, um, which is MS SQL Girl. Okay.